Tips for climbing barbed wire. <laughs> if there's time, look for gaps. Find a cemented post for support. You can't avoid some scratches, but with grit, you'll make it over. Daniel taught me this. I taught him reading and math in a special education classroom of two. Like <laughs> most boys his age, Daniel loves sports, hates walking in silent lines, and thinks school lunch tastes like prison food. He would know. First day of school, he arrives with a jumble of silly bands circling his wrist and a government-monitored bracelet around his ankle. Second day, he tells me to go fuck myself for telling him to go to speech class, apologizes on the third, the principal calls this growth. Daniel is 14, going on 25, reads like he's six. He says he'd like to rejoin his classmates someday, as long as they don't tell him anything. Problem is, someone's always telling Daniel something, like last semester when some little nine-year-old told him his nose looked like a Cheeto, so he dumped a can of fruit punch over her head and was kicked off the bus for the rest of the year. I tell him part of being a man is knowing when to hold back when life gives you barbed wire paws and look for gaps, but Daniel insists he doesn't have that kind of time. Mr. L, if they tell me something, I have to tell them something back. I am always telling Daniel something. Tuck in your shirt, we walk down the stairs. Our notebooks are for our ideas, so erase that pistol. It's not the first time he's drawn a gun. In January, there's a rumor he brought one to school. After that, I check him with a plastic wand every morning. He knows how to use the thing better than I do when I'm finished, he reads to me. Nature books are Daniel's favorite. He says they teach him about the world. Still, he struggles to comprehend the first grade text sometimes, and I have trouble comprehending how a boy so willing to learn could be so far behind, and whenever he loses his footing on a two-syllable word, I hear echoes of all the adults who failed him. Then I make him go back and fix his mistakes, because that's what good readers do. And every time he gets fed up, every time he tells me he quits, I remind him of the cemented post. Support yourself. Sound it out. And when he tells me to stop telling him something, I tell him, Daniel, let me be honest. I don't know life like I know phonics, but this much at least I've figured out. There will always be someone telling you something most without opening their mouths. So save the pushback for when I don't push you enough. You can't avoid some scratches, but with grit, you'll make it over. And if anyone expects anything less than that, you go ahead and tell them something back.